Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 27 in this series and is entitled Stored Procedure in ASP.NET 4.5 using C Sharp. Stored Procedure is just like a regular method. It can have input and output parameters. It can have programming statements. It allows you to prepare queries beforehand, but its advantage is that it separates web form code from database code. For our activity, we will create an ASP.NET website and place it in CASP Activity 27. We will create a SQL Server database called Student and a Student's table with the following fields. We will add three records. Let's create our website. Website Activity 27. And we'll create a SQL Server database. Name student. Say yes so that it will be moved to update a folder. We'll have one table. Stud ID is the first field. And it's an identity. Stud name is barcar50. And allowance is integer. The name of the table is students. Let's update it. Update database. Now we can add some records. Show table data. First one is for Ali. 1,500. Mohammed. 1,700 and Mariam 1,600 We will continue our activity by creating three stored procedures to insert, update, and delete records. For update, we will simply increase the allowance by 100 and for deletion, we will use the grid view to select the item to delete. So let's right-click stored procedure, add new stored procedure. So you can see that this is already the format to create the procedure. Here's the name of the procedure. Let's start it with SP and let's start with a stored procedure to insert a record of the student. Then um, we will need uh, two parameters. We don't need a parameter for the stud ID because it's an identity. S name is barcar50. Followed by a comma, and the second parameter is for the allowance. So let's call it allowance. It's an integer. So our statement should be the insert statement. We will insert into students uh, the field stud name there, comma allowance there. The values which will be specified by our parameters as name and allowance there. That's it. That's our first procedure. So let's update it. Update the database. Let's create a second one. Add a new stored procedure. This time we'll do it to update the allowance. So we're not going to need any parameter for this stored procedure. And it will simply be to update students. And we will set the allowance to the present value of the allowance plus 100. You can put a semicolon or not. Let's update it. And then we'll create our third stored procedure. This time it's for deleting a student. So we need only one parameter for this. And that is the student ID, which we will select later using the grid view. Say integer is equal to zero. And our statement will be to delete from the table students there 
where std id is equal to our parameter. Okay, class. Let's update it. Update our database. So now we have three start procedures. So let's create our web form. Add web form. Let's call it default. Let's go to the design view. We'll drag our students table so that we'll create the data source and the green view for the table. Uh, we will enable selection so that we can use it for the deletion later. Now we'll start with adding records, so student name, and we will need a text box beside it. We will make it very simple and also to add the allowance using a text box and to trigger the procedure we will use a button we'll just simply change the text to insert let's double click insert our button now we have to declare our namespaces system that web that configuration and also our data and the last is our system that data that SQL client. Let's create our connection string private string. Let's call it strcon is equal to web configuration manager that connection strings that connection string okay let's go to the web config so we can copy our connection string there control b okay we can now start using our stored procedure for the button it's the same as when we are uh, using um, um, reader or a data set so we'll start with sql connection Let's call it con is equal to new SQL connection using str con. Next is our SQL command. But this time we're not going to declare our SQL statement here. So it's going to be simply new SQL command. Then we will define our connection by using the connection property is equal to con and we have to set our command type so that they will know that it's a stored procedure command type there it's a stored procedure we're going to use a stored procedure then to identify what is the stored procedure, we have to use command text is equal to the name of our stored procedure, which is insert student. Then we can declare our parameters that parameters that add with value. Let's start with our student name or S name which will now be equal to whatever is typed inside text box one using its text property the same thing goes with our allowance so we will add with value at s allowance and it will be whatever is inside the second text box for its text property. Now we can open the connection. We will not use try catch finally to make it uh, faster. <laughs> Command that execute none query and we'll close the connection. Okay, so let's just uh, bind again our grid view one. And let's just put some 
simple text to say that we were able to add a new record. New record inserted. Okay, that's it. Let's try if our adding of record or insertion of record is working. Let's add a salem. Allowance is 2000. Let's insert. We have an error in the stored procedure parameter. Okay, let's try to look at our code again. Maybe, oh, there. We were not able to spell it correctly. So let's try to do it again. Run. Uh, Salem and 2000. Let's insert. Okay, it's working now. So let's continue with our code. Let's go back to our design. The second one is that we're going to update the allowance. Let's try to change the text. Update allowance will simply be by adding 100 to the allowance. So we'll do it again. So just copy. Uh, command type this one update allowance okay that is the name of our stored procedure and we don't need any parameter execute let's say allowance increased by 100. Okay, let's try to see if it's working. Update allowance. There. Allowance increased by 100. Let's update again. There. 1,700. Okay, so for our last procedure to delete, let's create a button and We'll change the text to delete. Again, we're going to use the same procedure. We'll simply delete or uh, change this name of the procedure, delete student. And we only have one parameter for the deletion, and that is the SID. But this time, our SID will be dependent on whatever will be selected in our grid view. So to do that, we'll use our grid view. Grid view one that the selected row, the row there, selected row, will look at cell, no, notice this, cell one. That will refer to the first field. So we did not use zero. Con dot open execute grid view when one record deleted. One record deleted. Okay, now uh, since we are going to use our grid view, it's also good if we're going to allow the user to see the currently selected selected row. So We'll just uh, put this command, green view one, that selected row uh, will change its back color to something other than the current color. Let's make it maybe, um, let's see, what are the choices? Okay, they're aquamarine, maybe. It's better. Okay, let's try to run it. Okay, let's try to delete uh, Mohammed. Delete. Okay, okay, Kalas. Let's try to delete Saleh. Delete. Okay, Kalas. Okay, so congratulations. We just finished discussing stored procedure in ASP.NET. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Mas salama.